distant galaxies and sparkling stars to the enigmatic phenomena of black holes and the birth of new stars. Astronomy offers a profound journey of exploration and discovery. It not only expands our understanding of the cosmos, but also ignites our curiosity and deepens our appreciation for the magnificent wonders that surround us in the night sky. Hi, I'm Paige, and with me today is John Shulin, president of Summit County Astronomy Club. This is a 501c3 organization to create curiosity about science, technology, engineering, and math. Welcome to the podcast, John. Good morning. John, I love looking up at the sky, but honestly, apart from a few constellations, I really can't tell much. So I'm hoping organizations like yours come to the rescue of people like me. Is that right? Well, yes. The uh, whole point of the observatory, first of all, with youth is, youth is to create curiosity in the arts and sciences. Because uh, right. for them, it's a Mr. Wizard experience. For adults, it's a nice recreational experience. The universe is beautiful to look at it and is. mystifying. Wonderful. So tell us, how did this uh, come about and how was it founded? Well, I, I have a lot of hobbies. Astronomy is one of them. And uh, I was president of a club that is not very well run. So I started my own astronomy club. And with the help of uh, Rotary International, I was able to get a solar scope that is dedicated to look okay. just strictly at the sun. And after doing that for three years and averaging over 3,000 people looking through that scope and setting up my own personal scope in the field, my Rotary club said, come on, John, why don't you build an observatory? And uh, two years later, we had our first building built. And then in uh, September of 2020, one of the local funders said, come on, John, write a grant for education. We know you want to start a second building. I said, well, you know, don't you want to wait for COVID to be over? He said, COVID will be over, write the grant. So I started to write a grant to repair a mount that we inherited from University of Akron. And within 90 days, close to $100,000 came in from people who had their children or grandchildren come out to the observatory and became better students. And so building two got built in six months. Wow, that is fast progress. And that's a very great response, isn't it? Yeah, the, the community support and the uh, local funders have been extremely generous, uh, much to my uh, overwhelming surprise. That's amazing, that's amazing. So can you tell us some of the specific programs or activities that the club organizes to achieve this awareness? Well, we have, we use meetup.com as a way to communicate with people who subscribe with us. So we have over 1800 people on our site and it grows probably four or five people a week. And uh, we just, all of our programs are free and open to the public. We do daytime programs for looking at the sun we have a total solar eclipse coming up April 8th for yes. our area. They expect our community to more than double in size and population. Unfortunately, it's in April for, for us, for it to be clear, is uh, less than 50% chance, but we're prepared. Mm -hmm. We're expanding our capabilities to uh, be able to do live stream video of objects that we photograph at the times, because we can look at things that we can't see visually through the telescopes, but through mm -hmm. 10 minutes of photography, they become apparent. And we'll be able to share that with the public along with our solar programs. Uh, our observatory is also fully handicap accessible, one of the few, I think, in the world that are handicap accessible. And wow, uh, we make it fun. I tell space jokes. I have people who are very serious astronomers out there, but I'm out <laughs> there having fun. And uh, I also throw a lot of science in with my bad, bad sense of humor, too. That is amazing. I, I've never heard of science being taught with uh, humor. You know, uh, it, it, that's very interesting. Could you tell us more about that? Well, how, like, how like you... for instance, the Andromeda galaxy is racing at our galaxy at 126,000 miles per second. Uh -huh. And in 400 million years, we're going to have the most amazing night skies. I intend to be facing up for that. Well, I sure hope all of us are going to be facing yeah. to that. And then, then another object is called NCG 457. It's an open cluster that looks like a stick figure in space with two eyes, arms, legs, feet, hands. 
and uh, I nicknamed it ET. And ET. Wh where we are, depending on how you orient the uh, eyepiece, usually ET is on its head or laying sideways. And I, you know, we'll have the, the scouts out or something like that, and I'll be telling the parent, it's so embarrassing. These child stars, you know, they're partying, <laughs> they're upside down, and uh, go on and on about that, which uh, yeah. is. The other thing I always like to tell people what's amazing, what we think of matter, our universe, things that we can touch, is only 4% of the universe. My favorite astronomer is Vera Rubin, who passed away, I think, in 2016. Uh, she mm -hmm. was an amazing story. I wish someone would do a biography on her and her family. Uh, but uh, she discovered 27% of everything, which is called dark matter. Dark in astronomy terms means unknown. It reacts with gravity, but it doesn't react with light. And that's 27% of everything. That's why our galaxy is shaped the way it is. It's probably why we're uh, humans on this planet. And then 69% of everything in the universe is called dark energy. And no one knows what it is, but it's causing the universe to expand at an ever accelerating rate. And that's kind of wow, uh, very humbling. It's so much, yeah, very humbling indeed. And uh, well, good luck with the biography that you are planning. And uh, I don't know, I, right now, I am so interested. I really don't want to ask you any more questions. I just want you to talk. <laughs> well, I think one thing for uh, nonprofits, uh, when I got started on this project, I went to a local directory of, of charitable foundations that uh, only serve uh, organizations within my county. Mm -hmm. And besides, uh, with the help of Rotary, I, I started to solicit some of them that I knew of and some I didn't know of and just started to write some letters. And it was surprising on who out of nowhere sent me substantial gifts. And uh, this is when the observatory was a pie in the sky. We had permission from uh, Bath Parks to build it. And that was it. Uh, and 14 months later, we had raised $75,000, which was sufficient enough to build everything out and buy all the equipment and be debt free. Um, also, it was very important to define what our mission was to explain it to both uh, any potential funders and donors and let them know what we were doing. And by choosing a project that you can have people identify with, with a clear goal and what you're going to do, um, being very well organized was very important. Luckily, uh, uh, I own a business that's in our 102nd year in our community, so I have a little bit of trust behind me. And, and people were willing to trust me with uh, precious dollars uh, to put into an account that we just sat on until we were able to do our actual building. And then when it came to build the second observatory, it was amazing. It was so fast. Uh, I thought I was going to be in for another 14 month slug and uh, 90 days later, uh, our biggest problem, biggest delay was the building department. So <laughs> awesome. That's um, awesome. But that's what I can. That's, yeah, I can see you're so passionate about this. Now, uh, are you the only person who's running this, or do you have a fantastic team that is with you? Uh, you know, prodding on and you know, helping out with everything. Yeah, well, and then the other thing thing that uh, was uh, good was uh, um, I, I got good volunteers. Uh, the uh, head of the Path Parks Board, who I had to go through. Uh, was our uh, representative for the uh, National Professional Ski Instructors of America, which I happen to be a ski instructor. And I met with her two weeks before. She goes, John, do I know you from somewhere? And I said, you didn't recognize me with my clothes off, meaning my uniform. <laughs> and, and it was just, uh, it, was, it's, it was a good project that fit well with everything the community wanted. Uh, the community has been incredibly supportive on this, uh, both from the politicians the police i mean I it's a win-win yeah, situation yeah. and i guess my 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 point to uh nonprofits is create that win-win situation mm -hmm. and and uh uh work with the system make things work i've done real estate projects that way where i created a win-win that the mm -hmm. uh when we had to get some things done with the city they were thrilled and, and that's, that's the key to success. Make it beneficial to all concern. Right. And that really Making helps. Making it beneficial, yes. That's one of the Rotary uh, uh, four-way 
Yes. Yeah. So, so right. It is. And, yes, yes, yes. And, and that's a good mantra a, uh, that, that Rotary adopted, but it was created by a businessman in 1934 yes. uh, d- during the recession. And he applied that to his business and he was able to grow his business. And then Rotary adopted the, the four-way test, which is a uh, good thing. Is, is it is it fair to all concerned? Will it benefit yes. everybody? And that's that's how you can create a uh, nonprofit that will work and probably be successful. It might take some Very true. a lot of work. It took me 14 months of beating the boards and pounding everybody I could meet and telling everybody about it to get it done. And to this day, probably only 15, 20% of our community residents know the observatories there. Mm-hmm. And so we're growing on a regular basis. I have these wonderful okay. handouts that we give out uh, and uh, local companies made me 2,500 of them. And we've gone through half of those already and we keep handing them out to anybody who's willing to listen. And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. I didn't know that was there. And I live across the street from it. So, it's, um, But uh, awareness is important for whatever your nonprofit is. Uh, okay. It makes it easier than that if you have to do an ask for funds. Uh, we do our observatory, all of our capital equipment we've, we've got by writing grants, but all of our operating expenses we've gotten from just local donations. People come out to the observatory, mm-hmm. they have a donation box there. If the average person gave us $2 on our meetup site, we'd exceed our budget by uh, 50%. And so yeah, that's uh, the value, yeah. we're, we're lucky Small that donations. we don't, we, uh, at this stage, at least we don't have any paid volunteers. Everybody, uh, we have four people right now besides myself who know how to operate the observatory. My goal is mm-hmm. 10 that uh, on any given night that is clear, somebody won't have a conflict and they'll come out and open the building up. And right. Fun. Wonderful. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, the support that you have to the community. So also, do you collaborate with any uh, local schools or educational institutes? Do well, you, do the, they the come public, visit schools, you every... public schools, it's, it's just like, oh, that's great, John. We'll call you. And my phone hasn't rung yet. But I do get, <laughs> okay. I do have one, one uh, teacher from other local uh, schools who's uh, the honors and astronomy teacher at his school, uh, not that close by, who's one of my volunteers. And what we're working on is trying to get sophomores in college or in high school uh, to come out and if they want to learn how to operate one of our 10 major telescopes, they'll be in charge of it. And then on their college resume, they can say, I operated a major telescope at a public observatory instead of just being a volunteer. And I thought that True. was a pretty good hook for college admissions. Yes, and so far, is. I've gotten one student to take me up on it. Oh, uh, that's it just, so sad. It, 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 it amazes me because uh, our telescopes are really easy to operate. You push a button, they go to where you want them to go. Uh, like my kids will say, I can do everything and know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, tell me, uh, do you think the advent of these digital tabs and, you know, these online apps that have uh, astronomy as, you know, a base, you know, showing us the constellations, do you think they are more of a help, do you think, or they are more oh, of a hindrance? I love them. I, I, I use uh, Skyview. There's a free version. I don't want to brag. I spent $4.99 and got the paid version. <laughs> but uh, uh, once in a while, just to identify a star to make sure our, our telescopes are pointing the right way. And uh, it's amazing. They show all the space junk and the satellites and the space station going by. And um, they're a very handy app. Uh, helps you identify constellations. Uh, even if the sky isn't that clear, you point it to where it, they're, you're looking and it shows you what you're looking at. Um, okay. uh, so you do with. think they're helpful? Oh, incredibly helpful. And uh, I have, uh, 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 with our club, we've been, we get people who donate small telescopes and things like that. And we give them back out to the public for free with the caveat that when they're done with it, they bring it back. And they also show up to the observatory at least once a year while they're using it to, uh, help out with our programs by setting their scope up at our observatory. So we're trying to expand the outreach and use of uh, equipment that some of it's really nice just laying around that no one's using. Uh, Our club, we sent one telescope to Fiji and Mm -hmm. uh, we're sending another one to uh, Philippines where it's going to get a lot of use because we're not using it that much. And in our area, a five inch scope doesn't show you much. And in the Philippines Mm -hmm. with the clear, clean skies, 
it's amazing. So uh, mm -hmm. we're trying to expand our outreach and maybe get some international back and forth uh, with those clubs too. And uh, um, right. expand the whole mission of uh, astronomy as an educational and entertaining tool. Let's take a break to understand what Jazuba is. Everyone at some point ponders on how this beautiful life can be made more meaningful. Maybe you're a leader trying to enhance your employee's experience at your organization. Or you already work for the community and seek volunteers with state-of-the-art skills to strengthen your nonprofit. Whatever your situation, know that you can make a difference. Chizuba began with this very vision. A vision to facilitate every skill and every passion in the world in meeting a social need. Corporate volunteering has several benefits for both businesses and organizations. In parallel, experienced and enthusiastic volunteers join NGO workers, enabling them to serve the community more effectively. Jazuba offers everyone looking to add purpose and meaning to their lives a chance to connect or volunteer virtually with nonprofit organizations from over 100 countries around the world. Visit www.chizuba.net and explore opportunities to find meaning. Chizuba, your platform to do good. And now, back with our guest. Absolutely. I, I do hope the people who are listening to this podcast will get in touch with you for collaborations uh, internationally. And we do have a presence in 102 countries. Chezuba connects volunteers, corporates, and nonprofits. So I hope that this message goes out to people who are listening to this. Well, I think that's our next evolutionary step. Uh, mm -hmm. One, uh, we're receiving a camera that will allow us to do a live stream YouTube video on what we're photographing. And mm -hmm. the uh, uh, cooperation and uh, uh, collaboration uh, nationally and internationally I yes. think offers great opportunity for everybody involved because it is a lot of fun uh, and it is uh, exciting. It is very exciting. My next question actually is this, you know, what is the most exciting or unique aspect of the universe that uh, you have observed so far in having the observatory? And uh, could you tell us more about how to get, you know, people excited to look up at the sky? Well, um, the most amazing thing I've seen through a telescope is uh, with our, we have what we call a double stack hydrogen alpha solar scope. It lets you see through the chromosphere to the actual boiling plasma of the sun. And two months ago, uh, I was out with six other people on a Sunday morning and we're looking at the sun and we see uh, the sun's, if the sun was the size of a golf ball, there is a, a loop that uh, relatively would be like 70 times the diameter of the earth. The, the solar flare? It. Are you talking about the solar it was flare? A, a, it would look like an arch. And all of a sudden, uh -huh. that arch broke, and a red ball of gas went off into space, and that was a class five coronal mass ejection. And the rest of the, that arch collapsed back onto the surface of the sun and did that all in less than one minute. And wow. the forces involved are just amazing because you can fit a Mind thousand bubble. diameters of the Earth across the face of the sun because we're on a very tiny insignificant rock. If you find a, a, a photograph to scale of the planets and the sun, if it shows the sun on a screen like we're looking at here, the earth would be a dot. Yes. <laughs> and so we're a very small dot. little planet. Uh, watching the, uh, following the James Webb Space Telescope launch go up was amazing. Our observatory is one of the uh, James Webb Space Telescope uh, uh, informational sites. And uh, oh, wow. And that was the most exciting four days of my life, watching that thing unfold and go into orbit because it was so incredibly complicated. And the yeah. science that it's going to bring back to us is going to be amazing and eye-opening. Hubble was a great instrument. Uh, Hubble, uh, a team of scientists one time did the Hubble, first Hubble deep field, which the Hubble board rejected several times. And one year, one of the presidents, they get a new president every two years, 
said, well, that, that'd be worthwhile. And they took 11 day exposure in an area of Virgo that there was no detectable light or matter. And when they got the photograph developed, it was filled with thousands upon thousands of galaxies. The universe got 33% bigger because of Hubble that day. And they've done two more since then. And now they're going to do one with James Webb. Again, they point to an area where they don't think there's any visible light or matter. And it's amazing what they discover. The other thing that's fun about astronomy, remember a telescope is a time machine. We're looking into the past. When I look at uh, Betelgeuse in the uh, uh, Orion uh, constellation, Mm -hmm. that's 700 light years away. And Betelgeuse is due to go supernovae. It might have gone supernovae 699 years ago. And we'll find out next year. But it's been doing, it's been getting real bright and real dim and bouncing around. So it's due any day now. And I hope it happens in my lifetime because it'll be pretty amazing. But, um, Mm -hmm. and so I like to uh, uh, read books about physics and, uh, you know, some ones that are for uh, peons like me, not real scientists. But um, it's, it it always, it always amazes me. But if you want to get really confused, what you hear from me is already in the past. So, physicists can't tell you what the present is yeah i I feel like i'm in a time machine already (laughs) well it it, it's a lot of fun uh i've gotten to uh meet various people real scientists uh a lady who was in charge of building the ligor in washington Mm -hmm. state which measures gravitational waves and she was just lecturing to uh uh uh, people at the moran mitchell association who was the first famous woman american astronomer and uh, I, when she was done, I said, I'm going to be able to use these to triangulate to find a sense of direction. And she said, yes. Now, it solved an age-old problem because I'm in the jewelry business. And when stars go supernovae, they create a lot of iron. They don't create many much in heavier elements. Where did heavy, heavy elements come from? Well, about 15 years ago, a big gravitational wave hit the Earth. They told astronomers where to look, and they found the two neutron stars had merged together. And the debris cloud around those neutron stars is made out of gold and platinum. My problem is it's 100 million light years away. But, uh, uh, and, and a fun fact is you take a level teaspoon of a neutron star, mm-hmm. it weighs more than Mount Everest. Wow. And neutron that stars were founded by one of my other favorite astronomers, uh, Dr. Bell, who also did get the Nobel Prize because her supervisors at Oxford took the Nobel Prize for her research where she discovered neutron stars. So um, Nobel Prize yes. tends to miss, miss the fair gender every once in a while, which is a shame. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully they'll get better yes. at it. Very true. Well, um, in an era when the mysteries of the cosmos continue to captivate our imagination, Organizations like the Summit County Astronomy Club serve as beacons of knowledge and inspiration, encouraging us all to look up and dream beyond the stars. Thank you so much, John, for joining us today. It was lovely talking to you. I just wish I could go on talking to you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to share what we're doing here and uh, be welcome to chat with any organization interested in either sharing or ideas. That's what we're here for. Wonderful. Thank you.